Hello everyone, welcome to this second Q&A video I'm making for my channel. I already made one before where in which I answer five questions that were asked in the comment section under my videos. But before I do that, a little housekeeping. Um, very soon, uh, the June 10th, I'm leaving for the US for two and a half weeks. Um, teaching workshops, uh, playing some gigs. So I won't be able to make uh, videos when I'm there, but I'm planning to record a bunch of videos. Of course, I'm gonna make a vlog about uh, the traveling and meeting other musicians and teaching and playing. And maybe I'll shoot even shoot a, some educational material on location. I'm planning to do a... Um, round table discussion with uh, my fellow gypsy jazz musicians uh, or well they play other styles too but Cha Limburger and uh, Dennis Cheng about the value of ear training and um, the difference between playing improvising on guitar and violin and that will be a discussion with a live audience and I will maybe even film some of the workshops. So a lot of content will be created while I'm there, but I, I cannot create any content during that time. And uh, another thing is, if you like my videos, as always, please subscribe to my channel. And if you wanna do a little bit more, you can always check out my Patreon page. Uh, it is linked on this video. So to the questions, I've selected five questions that I think are interesting to, um, many people that probably will be watching this video. So let's get to the first question, which was asked by T. Raj. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I am not, my apologies. And he asks, or he writes, thank you very much for all the high quality content on your channel. Do you think it's a good idea to try and learn gypsy jazz or jazz by yourself? Or should one get a professional education? I'm trying really hard lately to learn with the help of your videos and by transcribing as much as I can, but I see no improvement in my improvisation and in my understanding of the music in general. I'm kind of stuck in a rut. Any suggestions? Thanks again. Very good question. And um, first of all, let me say that I understand the frustration and the feeling of being stuck in a rut. Because this has happened to almost everyone that's studying music, and in particularly jazz improvisation. Um, it's very easy to get frustrated because the improvements in your playing or your understanding will go very slowly. It will go so slowly that you probably won't even notice when you're making the improvements. So. That's why, that's why I say in my videos, um, focus on the work and not so much on the result. Because if you focus on the result, you will get frustrated even sooner. So that's, I learned that the hard way and I still get frustrated from time to time because I, I practice a lot and I describe a lot and I practice many lines. But before, for example, these lines become part of my system that it can take weeks, months, sometimes even years, sometimes it never happens. Like I said in the previous video, I've maybe studied, let's do an estimate, maybe I've studied 200 lines in the past four months and maybe I play two, maybe three of those lines are really part of my system. And with that, I mean that they are really part of something that I could play in a real life situation. Uh, that I, I hear them, I hear them at the appropriate times, I can connect them to other lines I play, I can alter them. Um, they feel completely like they're my lines. I don't even remember where I got them. And all the other lines, you know, I still practice them, I forget them, I go back. So to answer your question about uh, needing a teacher, of course, it's, it's never a bad idea to get a teacher, but be very careful that you get a teacher that is... Um, that understands what you want to achieve. Because if you get a teacher that is going to teach you in a completely different way, it might still be a very good thing, but it also could distract you from the path you've chosen, which is transcribing. 
with the help of my videos. I, so to answer your question directly, no, I don't think it's necessary to get a teacher unless you're struggling a lot with technique. If you're struggling a lot with technique and you need somebody to watch you play, then it might be a very good idea to get a teacher. But again, get a teacher that actually knows what he's talking about. And um, for the rest, I could only say just keep at it. You will get better uh, even when it goes very slowly. So if you keep transcribing, keep isolating lines, keep practicing them on your guitar, uh, keep trying to uh, apply them to different songs, then um, you will make progress. So one thing I do, for example, is I take one line. Uh, let's say I, I take a line like this. Um, let's do that one. One, two, three, four. So that's a line from E7 to A minor. I could also play it to major. Then I take a song and I play that line every tenth I get. Right? So I, I only play on a five chord resolving to a kind of tonic. And then if, if I can't play that line on a certain place, I, I won't play it. So I have a backing track or a, uh, I record a backing track myself. And then I play that line at the appropriate times. Then maybe the second time around, or, or maybe even like the 10th time around, I try to find lines that go towards this line, right? So maybe I play something like... Or um, I, I try to continue on from the line, so... Right, so I, I try to make the line part of a bigger thing. And it's very frustrating, difficult process uh, but if you keep doing this over and over, then um, you will make progress, although very slowly. Okay, next question uh, was asked by Ignacio Torregrossa. And he writes, uh, Christio, uh, Christ Hi, Christian. Uh, another great video with a bunch of good legs. I understand your problem with titles clickbait. It's true that with a title related to modes, skills, general jazz music, you get more views, but you have to realize there's a gypsy jazz community around the world, and that is your target. So it's not so much a question as more of a comment, but I got many questions, comments in that direction. It gives me a chance to talk a little bit about uh, the titles of my videos, what I try to accomplish with the videos. Uh, I do realize that many of my videos have clickbait titles, and that, that can be quite annoying to see. Um, I understand it completely, but, but here's the thing. Right? I've, I've, I've done some experiments. If you look back in my videos and you look at the titles, you can see that the titles with the most clickbaity title possible, those videos got the most views. Many more views than titles that try to really convey a serious message. So. Ignacio writes, well, but your, your target audience is Gypsy Jazz players. Well, no, they are part of my target audience. But if only Gypsy Jazz guitar players would watch my videos uh, that are on YouTube, maybe that's 500 views. And that's not enough to sustain, the, sustain my video making for this channel. Because what I try to accomplish is I... I see this channel as part of my business as a musician, right? I try to promote um, my workshop teaching so that when I give a live workshop, that there will be many people. So I need as many people to see these videos as possible. And not only gypsy jazz guitar players, also regular jazz guitar players or guitar players from other styles. And the fact is that guitar players, they search mostly for stuff like modes and scales and technique probably. So <laughs> I need to give my videos titles that incorporate those keywords in some way. And the more, I could say controversial, but the more, let's just say click baby you go, the more people tend to click on it. And I know this for myself, but I also tend to click more on clickbait titles. You see those clickbait titles and you think to yourself, 
what is, what is this guy trying to tell me? You know, what is this guy, what is this idiot trying to say? And, and you click on it just to see what's happening. And of course, for the people that already know my videos and they like my videos, they don't, I don't need to clickbait them. But I do need it for other people. So for now, uh, let's say until I reach uh, 20,000, but maybe even 50,000 subscribers, if I ever reach that, I need to promote my videos in, uh, in a way that makes people click on it. So if you are offended by it or if you hate them, I'm very sorry, but it doesn't affect the content of the videos at all. You can watch all the videos. I always try to give you lots of stuff that you can work with and the titles are just, they, it's, they're just throwaway titles. Okay, the third question, uh, which was asked by Kit Poker 007. And he asks, so this will work with playing straight jazz? And, and that question was asked under a technique video. And that is a good question because that video, I think, was called the Why Gypsy Jazz Picking is the Most Powerful Technique. And I got some uh, critique about that too, because uh, most powerful, what do you mean? Well, again, it's a clickbait title. But what I mean is, and I also explained it at the end of the video, what I mean is that the advantage of Gypsy Jazz Picking and if you don't know what it is, then I will link a technique video under this video. Um, the, the reason I said it is because a gypsy just picking technique works on every guitar and works in every jazz style. Let's just say it doesn't work with uh, insane sweep picking styles. But if it's jazz, if it's bebop or contemporary, avant-garde or swing or gypsy jazz, that technique will work. It's not the most efficient technique. Most The most efficient technique would be economy picking, but economy picking doesn't really work on a gypsy jazz guitar, especially not when you assume the, the traditional economy picking posture where you lock the, the, the wrist on the, on the bridge or behind the bridge. It, it will work on a gypsy jazz guitar, but you don't get the right sound. You don't get this... <laughs> This deep sound, which you do get with gypsy jazz picking. That's why I said it's the most powerful. So it's not the it's not the fastest, although it's pretty fast, and it's not the <clears throat> the most efficient, although it's pretty efficient because there's a lot of down sweeping. But it's definitely the most powerful. So uh, regarding sound, and it it does work in straight jazz. Of course, you you are missing out on um, up sweeping. Uh, but you could uh, still incorporate that by changing your hand position slightly for uh, upsweeping. I do that too. I, I don't uh, do rhythmical upsweeps. That means I don't do upsweeps in which I try to play eighth notes, but I do occasional upsweeps for um, kind of triplets or fast runs, stuff like... Um <laughs> So you see, I, I turn my hand for that. But I, I would never do it for eighth notes. In, in that case, I do double down strokes. Okay, um, question number four uh, was asked by Keelan P53, and he writes, Christian, which one of your videos would you start with to learn jazz? Thanks. Uh, that's a good question um, because I have so many videos now and there will be many more and I can imagine that you look at my videos and you think, where do I start? So if you have no experience in jazz and there's there's two places you can start. If you want to check out Gypsy Jazz Picking Technique, um, I'm linking the video that I think you should start with on this video and that video in itself has many, uh, has, has links to other videos that are relevant. If you have no experience with improvisation, I would start with my series, which is called Gypsy Jazz for Bluegrass Pickers. Now, you don't have to be a bluegrass um, musician for that. It's just that I'm going through Minor Swing, which is an easy song, and I show you very nice and easy to use licks uh, in three places on the guitar, like low, and the mid and high on the neck. So I think that's a good place. And also 
demonstrate how to practice with those phrases, with those lines. And from there, you could, you could pretty much choose any video that you think the topic is interesting. But I would start there. Um, okay, last question, question number five, was asked by... Oh, I have two more questions, so I have six questions. This question was asked by YLST. I don't know, I don't know how you pronounce that. But he asks, how, how can I solo without a backing track? With a backing track, I kind of understand chords, but without it, I can't even understand what they mean by hearing the chords when soloing. I tried to emphasize chord tones, but it didn't work as it does with back and track. Is it about rhythm or something else? How can I manage that? And when people talk about hearing the chords, or when I say that, what I mean is that even if there would be no back and track, uh, you could still hear which song you were playing. All right, if I play something like this. Then probably you rec recognize, oh, it's minor swing. And the reason why you recognize it is because I'm very clearly outlining the chords. So I'm not talking about, I'm not thinking about target notes per se. I'm thinking about playing lines that resolve, that are functional. And if you want to know more about that, uh, maybe minor swing is not even the best example. Although it does work on minor swing. But if you want to know more detailed information about that, please check out a very recent video called, uh, or that it's three videos about uh, simplifying changes, but especially the last one, which is called uh, Use of Chord Skill Theory versus Functional Thinking. Because what you need to do is outline functions. And you do that by connecting, mostly by connecting arpeggios. To get more details, watch that video. But that's what I mean, or that's what people mean probably by hearing the chords when you're playing. Okay, now the last question, question number six, was asked by Tommaso Macchioni, or Maccioni, he said, could you describe how you describe a jazz piece? Thank you. Good question. And so there's a lot of confusion about transcription because transcription, many people think it means writing something down, which of course, literally, it does mean it. But nowadays, or I think probably forever, transcription in jazz just means that you're checking out a solo or parts of a solo of, a, of someone else, probably of a, a great master. And you could do that in many ways. You could uh, learn the solo on your instrument. That's one way. You could learn to sing it very precisely. Uh, that's usually what people call, refer to as the Lenin Tristano method or part of it. Or you could write it down. And I've, I've done all three of them. Right now I'm writing it down. Um, I'm doing that because I can use the materials in the videos I'm making. But also I found that it's very nice to write it down. It's something that you can look at at a later time. And when you don't have inspiration, you, I can go to this. I have this one big PDF uh, and it's, it's like 120 pages. It's full of lines and I can, I can look back and remember, oh yeah, this is this great line. I can check it out again and practice it again. So that's the way I do it. I've also described complete solos in the past and learned to solo as a, as a kind of an etude, right? As a technical exercise. It's also a possibility. And the, the way I do it, I use a software program called Transcribe. And it's great for several reasons. Uh, first of all, you can slow the thing you're transcribing down to 10% or something, really slow. Uh, and you can tune uh, the song. So let's say it's an old recording, it's not completely in tune, it's, it's recorded too fast or too slow and it's, it's not on the right pitch, you can uh, tune it. So that's great for that. And then you can use any notation software you want. Uh, there's a great free one, um, which I've forgotten the name, but you can see the name right now on screen, uh, but you could use Guitar Pro, 
I think that's the one that people use. Uh, you could use Sibelius, you could use Finale, you could use any program. You could even write it by hand. Also, I don't recommend that because you want to be able to have it digitally and send it to yourself. Sometimes I send, every now and then, I send this big PDF to my uh, mail address so that I can always look at it. It doesn't matter where I am. Um, I hope this answers all these questions to your satisfaction. Uh, people will ask the questions. Thank you. And uh, keep asking questions and I'll make another Q&A video next month. I'm planning to make one, one more video before I leave the 10th, the June 10th. So I'll be back end of June. And of course, then I'll continue my video making uh, process. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.